Mic check, mic check, mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two, three, four, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, one, two, three, mic check, mic check, mic check, one, two, three, four, five. Mic check, A, B, C, one, two, three, mic check, mic check.
All right, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. First off, thank you guys for coming and thank you for joining us. Thanks to all the people that are watching from home as well as we introduce the 28th men's basketball head coach, uh, uh, New Mexico State men's basketball head coach, Jason Hooten. <laughs> coach Hooten is joined by Director of Athletics Mario Mocha and New Mexico State University Chancellor Dr. Dan Arvizu. The three of them will make statements and then we'll uh, open it up for questions from the media. Media members will have a roaming mic if you just put your hand up and we'll try to get to you. And then uh, if you also would please state your name and your media affiliate before asking your question. Um, without further ado, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Michael. Well, good afternoon, Aggie Nation. Um, we got our guy. <laughs> This is an exciting day for uh, NMSU. Uh, it's exciting to see everyone come out. Uh, I've always been impressed with the support uh, that the Las Cruces community and the greater region provides uh, to basketball in this special event. Uh, so uh, let me add my welcome and thank you for being here. Um, I just want to say a, a couple of words. I'll be brief. Uh, first of all, Athletic Director Mario Mocha and our search committee has done, in my opinion, a very incredible and thorough job and bringing us Jason Hooten as our new uh, Aggie Nation next coach. This, this is an important, uh, important moment in our program history. Um, we're all aware of the events that uh, led to that early end of our, of our last season, and we are now moving forward with renewed focus on ensuring that we have character and integrity and a, and a very strong, positive attitude in our program. In the coming days and weeks, more of you will have an opportunity to meet with Coach and his family. Um, and to do that, uh, I think you will find, as I have found and we have found, that this is a man who is a proven leader on the court and a genuine, sincere person capable of building a strong, positive culture uh, modeled with both character and integrity. We're confident Coach Hooten and his team will restore success to our basketball program. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, Mario Mocha, and we'll hear some more about the coach, and uh, we'll welcome him momentarily. So, Mario. Thank you, Chancellor. Boy, oh boy. Thanks, Aggie Nation, for coming out today. This is a great turnout. Congratulations. And I know I'm going to miss somebody, but I know we have a couple of our regents here. Uh, uh, Dr. Devastali, Amu Devastali, and Arsenio Romero, please raise your hand. Well, you know, still are a little bit, I think. But thank you for being here. Uh, a wonderful Sunday afternoon, and I want to thank everybody who's uh, watching at home on Aggie Vision. Uh, today, we open a new chapter, and we begin a new trajectory in Aggie basketball history. Now, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to begin on a somber note. Uh, last night, uh, Keith Colson... Uh, former Aggie men's basketball player, Aggie Hall of Famer, an assistant coach on our Final Four team, and former athletic director has passed. And uh, he was a great man, and he will be missed. I know some of his family are here, so. All right. Uh, I really want to thank the, the Pride Band for being here. They were wonderful. Our spirit squad, as well as Pistol Pete for being here today. In addition, I am so pleased to have the all-time first lady of Aggie basketball in attendance, Mary Henson, and her daughter, Lori. I could have said my landlord, too, about eight years ago, but, you know, First Lady Aggie basketball will have to suffice. I certainly want to thank various people who assisted us in the search process. First, the committee, Dr. Kevin Melendrez, he's here, uh, Department Head of Accounting and Information Systems, as well as our current faculty athletic representative. Uh, two great supporters of Aggie Athletics, Dino Cervantes is over there, the president of Cervantes Enterprises, and uh, John Hummer, the president of BCOM, who couldn't be here today. And from our athletic staff, uh, Deputy AD Bron Cartwright, who is not in attendance, 
but our senior woman administrator, Amber Burge, is running around here somewhere. So thanks to them for all their help. Um, I would be remiss, and I certainly would like to recognize uh, the dire director of athletics from Sam Houston State University, Bobby Williams. Uh, I've known Bobby for several decades, and he is a tremendous professional in this business. Uh, these situations are never easy, uh, but he was great throughout the entire process. So thanks to him and all of Sam Houston State University. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife, Heidi, and Addie and Gemma for putting up with me during this search process in the last few months, and that's all I'll say about that. So thank you. And finally, uh, you know, I'd like to thank the finalists. Uh, they were an impressive group, and there was an unbelievable amount of interest in, in our program and in this job. Now, uh, prior to introducing Coach, uh, I want to acknowledge the challenges uh, of our men's basketball program that they've faced, you know, over the last several months. Um, I want to make it clear that an important attribute that we look for in our new coach was a commitment to build a program modeled on character and integrity that all Aggies can be proud of for what happens both on and off the court, okay? Now, through this thorough and comprehensive search, I believe we found the right coach in Jason Hooten. Now, this is what we got in Coach Hooten. He's a 30-year college basketball veteran who, in his 13-year head coaching career at Sam Houston State University, has won 261 Division I games for a 61% winning percentage. As a head coach, he's won 20 or more games six times, including seasons of 24, 25, and 26 wins. And he's gone to the postseason six times as well. This past year, he was the number one seed in the Western Athletic Conference Tournament and won 26 games. He also won an NIT game on the road. His team also beat two Power Five teams on the road at the University of Utah and the University of Oklahoma. Terry Coleman, sorry about that. Beat your Sooners. He is a defensive-minded coach, and his players have some sandpaper to them on the court. Last year, his team was fourth in the nation in points allowed and fifth in the nation in opponents' field goal percentage. All right? He is a finalist this year for the Hugh Durham Award, which is presented to the top Division I mid-major coach in the nation. And he is also a finalist for the Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award an award honoring success on the court while also displaying moral integrity off the court. <laughs> Plus, Jag, he kicked the hell out of us the last two times we played him. <laughs> now, what sold me most on Coach Hooten was his tremendous respect for the history of New Mexico State basketball and the potential that it holds, as well as incredible passion and focus to win on a consistent basis at the highest level. I know he can recruit because he has a wonderful wife in Kristen, the new first lady of Aggie basketball. Kristen, could you stand up, please? And his two great kids, Jaden and Jace. All right, why don't you guys stand up? Now, believe it or not, I found more if Coach Hooten was going to take this job through Jaden and Addie on Snapchat than I did through Coach Hooten. Because I woke up in the morning and my wife says, you know, Addie was snapping Jason and right now this is where they're at. I'm like, wait, this whole thing hinges on a 15 and a 17 year old and social media? <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you too for your participation in this. Now look, Coach Hooten has hit the ground running and he's ready to go. And at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the 28th head coach for our New Mexico State Aggies, Coach Jason Hooten.
Thank you. Uh, I usually don't get nervous when I get up and do these things, but I'm more nervous today that I'm going to hold this thing together or not. Big, the biggest reason is just how hard of a decision it was, um, not because of the basketball program here and the rich tradition, but just because of how long I was at Sam Houston, 19 years. It's really hard to leave a place after you've been there that long and you put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears there and your family was there. Um, so I put Mario through a whole lot. I know you you all were wondering why it took so long for me to make a decision, and I think everybody knew that I was the person, but um, I appreciate Mario. I know on the way home on uh, Thursday, we flew back Thursday, and I got home Thursday. I told him that I'd have a decision made at the end of the day, and he called me at 3.30, and I picked it up and said, it's not the end of the day. The end of the day is 5 o'clock, and it, right now I've still got actually an extra hour. So uh, it's, it's 2.30 your time. You need to give me three more hours. So at that time I told him uh, that I was more than likely going to take the job. But I, I wanted to go home, and I wanted to sit at my house because I felt like that that was going to be the, the hardest thing to do is to make that decision while I was sitting at my house that, Kristen and I built four years ago, and we own nine acres, and, you know, got a dog running around with no fence, and, you know, I just said, I'm going to go home and sit down on the back porch in front of that swimming pool, and I'm going to think about it, and I think at that point in time, Kristen and I were sitting out there, and I just said, man, this is, this is what I'm going to do, so we made that decision on uh, that night, and I slept a little bit better, and then... Uh, <laughs> He started calling about 8 a.m. I don't think I answered it till 10, so I guess that would be 9 o'clock here. I, I guess the days start a little sooner here as well. So anyway, again, I just don't want anyone to take, take that the wrong way. Um, I just want to give Sam Houston a lot of respect. First of all, I want to thank uh, the university in itself uh, for giving me an opportunity 13 years ago to be a head coach and take a chance on me. Uh, the first guy was Dr. Jim Gatner, the president who hired me. It was really a unique situation. He hired me in April and he retired um, in August. And so immediately I had another president, Dr. Dana Hoyt, who was there with me for the first 10 years or so. And then the last couple of years is Dr. Alyssa White, who was been, has been remarkable to me. And then uh, assistant AD, Chris Thompson, who was a person that was just like another mother for me. And then A.D. Bobby Williams, who um, gave me a chance, gave me a chance to be standing up here where I am today. And, and the most enjoyable thing of it all was just how supportive he was of me because he knows that this is a basketball place. And he knew I worked really hard to get to this moment. Um, it's going to be really weird going back there and playing them uh, next year. But that's just part of it. And if you're in this business long enough, those things are going to happen from time to time. So want to thank them and um you know again it, it's it's it was a tough decision for them for because of them not because of you and i mean look at this crowd today this is this is amazing and this is what this place is all about so a couple of the people i want to thank real quick um my high school coach marco cena my junior college coach ken deweese um and then my mentor and the athletic director currently at tarleton state lon reisman um wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for him. Um, and then the, the, the guy I worked for my first six years at, at uh, Sam Houston, Bob Marlin, he's a head coach at Louisiana University now. When he hired me uh, and Kristen, he tried to hire us in 2000, and it wasn't the time. We just weren't quite ready to do it. And went back in 2004, he called me again, and we made a leap of faith. Um, and, you know, one thing he told me was, you take this job and keep getting me the same players that you got them at Tarleton, and someday you'll have a chance to be the head coach here. And, and that worked out for me, so I appreciate the opportunity that he gave me. Uh, my family, obviously, y'all have already met Kristen. Um, it's hard being a coach's wife. It's hard being a coach's wife when you have somebody that's driven as much as I am and then probably works too hard at times, uh, probably doesn't spend enough time with family. And not to mention, she's also a coach and probably the best coach in our house. So uh, appreciate you, Jaden and Jace. Um, you know, it's hard being a kid of a college coach, for sure. Um, probably not there all the time like I need to be, but 
that's what happens when you you've got a really good wife that can take care of a lot of things as well so my folks are here today my stepmother um my father mother and stepfather and um my brother and his wife are here today as well appreciate you guys making that long journey here And they'll also be to a lot of games. You guys, depending on where my mom's tickets are, uh, there will be nobody that will get on the officials as much as she will. So we're probably going to have to get those tickets way back there somewhere. <laughs> At times I have to turn around and give her the, the hush, hush sign. So anyway, uh, you always leave people off for sure. Uh, actually, Surprisingly, got a couple of my college teammates here today. Uh, they live in El Paso, Jim Marino, Jeff Williams. Um, played with those guys at Tarleton. Really a unique situation. Uh, Jim's father put a, about 10 guys together in a van and drove them to Tarleton uh, back in about, I guess, man, 88, 1988. Coach Reisman kept about seven or eight of them, and I came in the next year in 89 and not only got to play with those guys but also got best friends for life. Uh, really feels comforting knowing they're just right up the road. Also, got a lot of El Paso friends here that are on the Sun Bowl committee, and just Kristen and I got to know them over the years. means a lot you guys coming over today as well, so appreciate that. Uh, Chancellor Arvizo, I really appreciate you um, believing in me and just giving me this opportunity today um, in a unique time. So, And then, obviously, Mario. There's a lot of good ADs out there in the country, but I think Mario's one of the best. And you know, for what for what he's done uh, for this university and uh, this athletic department, um, you know, a lot of times athletic directors are, you know, looked upon as what it what your university looks like globally or nationally and I think New Mexico State is right there at the top when you when you talk about a university and education and athletics and especially basketball so appreciate you two guys the committee um, you know I, I I knew um, you know from Mario's conversations and his energy uh, I knew that I was a person that you know he was really interested in and was going to give a good shot at uh, but when they loaded up on that private jet um, you know, we we beat Santa Clara uh, on Wednesday, and we loaded up and came back, and we landed in uh, we landed at uh, Bush at about five o'clock, and I had taken I I had the manager drive my car down because we couldn't get on one flight back. We had to split it twenty four and seven. So I got on with the athletic director and a couple of people, and. Drove, drove my car back, dropped a few people off, and got back to the house. And, you know, they flew in about seven people on a private jet. And, you know, I, I know that doesn't mean everything, but that sure meant a lot to me just to let me know what they thought about me. And, you know, and the committee was great. I told them that uh, you, you, you all can be rest assured that those questions that they asked me that night were very thorough. I've never seen a committee ask that many questions in all the interviews I've ever had in my life. So I think I'm very well tested, and uh, I think they checked me out pretty good. So, But appreciate the committee, not not to name everybody, but just appreciate you guys uh, believing in me and and uh, liking what I had to say. So I, I appreciate that as well. Uh, and then before I talk a little bit about just me and my philosophy and what I feel about the program moving forward, um, you know, I just want to thank Ms. Henson for being here today um, and, and her daughter. You know, uh, just over the years to, you know, to, to be a young coach and coming up and to think that someday you would be able to coach at a place where Lou Henson coached and uh, you follow in, a, uh, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to follow in his footsteps or be ever worthy of, of him or the job that he did here and, and all the other places, but uh, we're sure going to try. So um, just want to say thank you for being here today. It really means a lot to me. You know, I think I'm a person that really um, – values the game, values the, the, the people before us, the predecessors before us, and, um, you know, what, what Coach Henson meant to the game of basketball, not just New Mexico State. So re really means a lot, you two being here today. So Other than that, um, I'm not really a, 
Uh, I'm not a write down speech type guy. I'm a shoot from the hip and uh, talk from the heart person. Uh, I'm also a straight shooter. Uh, sometimes people, players, coaches uh, don't really like that, you know, when you really tell them what you think instead of what they want to hear. Um, so I think over this next long, long haul uh, of me being the head men's basketball coach here, I think you're going to really get to know me as a person. Uh, I think you're going to get to know who I am, uh, my energy, my passion, and what I bring to the table. Uh, I'm an everyday guy, and when I'm recruiting, we always tell players, student athletes, you, you got to be an everyday guy. Uh, everyday guy is a person that's going to get up every day, go to class, regardless of how you feel or you know, what the weather's like outside, you're going to go to class every day. Um, you know, and when we step between those lines every day, we're going to work really, really, really hard. And my definition of working really hard is a lot different than everybody else's. And I think that the reason that we've had so much success at Sam Houston is because we've built a culture, and a culture is what it is all about. And my job um, and what I've been hired to do is to come in here and to reestablish a culture that this place has always had and always expected. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to that challenge, and I know that it will be a challenge. We have a lot of work ahead of us, um, but I wouldn't have signed up for this if I didn't feel like, number one, it's something that I could do, or number two, it was something that I'm excited to do. So, um, you know, it was funny last night, we were uh, on our way to, to eat dinner and, you know, my wife is a non-social media person, so for all you out there trying to reach out to her, good luck. Um, but we were in the car, and she's like, my God, I went from 40 followers on Twitter to 170 in one day. And I laughed, and I said, yeah, I said, just remember this. They all love us right now because we hadn't played a game. <laughs> just as soon as we get our butt beat the first time, everybody's going to be calling for my head. So, but... Uh, I know that comes with the territory as well. Uh, but I'm, I'm just extremely excited. Uh, the hard part for me is really the last week, just going through all this, really the separation from Sam Houston. And that's really not done yet. I've still got a lot of papers to sign and, and, and T's to, to cross and I's to dot. And Kristen and the kids will finish their school year. Um, they're in the middle of softball and and we're looking for homes right now. So it'll be obviously a little hard at first without them here. And, and, uh, but but we're, we're, we're elated. But my point to that is, is I'm ready to go to work. Um, the hard part for me is getting through all of this because I'm ready to go to work. Um, we have a lot of work to do. I'm excited. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons that we took this job. And I think the number one reason is it's, it's you. It's everybody that's sitting in here right now um, and the care that you have for this university, this community, and this program. And that's when it was all said and done, um, that's, that's why I ended up making this decision because who doesn't want to be at a place like this where people really, really, really care like you do? And so for that, I can tell you that no matter what, we will always put a product on the floor that will play as hard as you've ever seen anybody play. Um, and you will always uh, win or lose. And we're going to win a whole lot more than we lose, I'll tell you that. But because <laughs> no matter how bad you want to win, there's nobody that wants to win as bad as me, I promise you. It's kind of like parents. You know, they're always like, man, you know, my kid's not going to play. Trust me, I'm playing the people that I want to win. <laughs> I'm going to play the people that can help us win. So, But I think you're always going to be proud of, of what we're going to put on the floor and we're going to play hard we're going to play tough um, we're going to be physical uh, don't tell the officials that um, but, but we're going to be a lot of fun to watch and you know and and I'm always a better coach when we got a lot better offensive players I always remember that so so anyway I don't know how this works I'm I'm good we're good take them now okay thank you appreciate it We'll, uh, a couple of housekeeping things. We're going to, we'll take some questions from the media right now. 
Uh, and then afterward, uh, Michael will be around and he'll, uh, he'll tell us when that's enough. And um, I think we have a microphone. And if you guys who ask your questions could identify yourself by name and your affiliate, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, when we're finished with questions, we have a reception for all of those who would like to uh, in, the, uh, in the new uh, suites and club area. Uh, immediately following the questions, okay? Coach will have some one-on-ones. Uh, but, um, Michael, go ahead. Uh, I'm Jason Groves with the Fun News here in Las Cruces. Congratulations, Coach Wheaton. Um, can you, uh, I, I expect that, you know, you, you followed and there's been some players, some, some players here who have hit the transfer portal. So having said that, and you know, you're building your staff and your roster, can you just talk about what fans can expect from, from your team here in year one as you kind of start, start building here? Yeah. Um, oh, is that for me? Yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah, this is awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think you always, as a you know, coach that has taken a new job, you, you've started to put some of those thoughts together as far as staff is concerned. And so we're working on that right now. Um, as far as you know, the players and the returning, I mean, I really haven't had a chance to just wrap my arms around any of that stuff right now moving forward. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be recruiting really hard uh, regardless of what comes back or, or what's not coming back. We've got a lot of work to do for sure. And, you know, part of the, the intrigue of the job was the fact that, you know, it's, uh, it's like taking a new job first time, you know, starting over a little bit. You get to build your culture and you get to bring in the type of student athletes that you've always had and you've always recruited. And so we're excited about that. From the outside looking in last year, like did you have any impressions, you know, of, of, of what happened here? And then did you need some sort of assurances at some point during the process that, you know, you would be able to, you know, build it the way that you, that you saw fit? Yeah, I, I mean, from the beginning, I was told that, you know, everything had been checked out and, you know, done all my background check that I needed to. And, uh, you know, hiring a coach to come in to build a culture, I think, from day one, you're, you know, you're not going to come here and, and, and do that unless you're told, hey, that you're going to be able to do this like you always have. And I think the way that I've always done it is by getting tough, hard-nosed kids with high character and integrity and, you know, that want to play real hard, want to be coached hard, want to be loved, want to be taken care of, want to be in a community like this and a you know, have a fan base like this. I think there's not a lot of student athletes out there that, you know, won't want that. I can't, but I know who you are. <laughs> so Colin, I don't know if everyone knows, but so Colin was in College Station and he covered he covered me at Sam Houston for a lot of years. So Colin, Colin's about the... He's second behind me in shoe game. <laughs> it's funny you bring that up. Matt Trent told me to tell you that his shoe game is still better than yours. So. <laughs> uh, I guess, obviously, you're at Sam Houston um, 13 years, and that you touched on it a little bit, that this was kind of the right chance, the right opportunity for you to take this. Given everything that's happened in the last year, though, here, why did you feel like maybe this was the right time to come in and take this program over and you know, be the guy to turn it around? Um, I think the opportunity, um, you know, it's a unique, again, unique situation in that, you know, a lot of times, no matter when you take over or whatever the situation is, you know, you have an opportunity to build a culture. And I thought that this, you know, this is a culture time that needs, needs to be, you know, a new, new culture needs to be built and a new start and a new beginning. So, but also, you know, more than anything, I mean, when you, when you hear New Mexico State, you, you think of a great, great, historic, traditional basketball program where the people really care. And again, uh, I'm here today to talk about New Mexico State, not where I was or what I had. Uh, this is about, you know, what what's here, what's before me and before us. And uh, so... You know, so, so for me, it's just a, an unbelievable opportunity. You know, I, I, you know, I'm like everyone else. I mean, you do this and you want to continue to try to improve, you know, whether that be a better situation or better for your family or, 
or whatever the case may be. Um, but to me, you know, this job is as good as a power five job. And, you know, I felt like the time was right. And, um, you know, we're excited. I can't wait to get to work. Coach, uh, Rachel says you're 207. Congratulations on getting the job. Thank you. you. Talk about rebuilding the culture. How do you go about doing that after such a tumultuous season off the court? Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, I think you guys will all learn I'm not a big social media person. I'm not a pat myself on the back guy. Um, that's just kind of not me. I probably got that from my dad. Um, <laughs> just not my personality at all. But, um, you know, I, I just think that they made a statement when they hired a guy like me. And I mean that from a, you know, guy that does things the right way, a guy that takes hard-nosed kids. Maybe we over a little, maybe we overachieve a little bit at times, um, you know, and I think you do that because you establish a culture. A, what's your culture going to be? You know, our culture is going to be that we're going to be tough. We're going to play hard all the time. You know, and I've been blessed in my 13 years as a head coach. I don't think we've been outside the top 50 in the country in defensive stats. Um, the years that we win 26 and 25 and 24 games are the years when we've been blessed to have some two or three really good offensive players. And so I think just commitment to what are we going to be about? And I thought that what we need to be about right now in this program is who I am. And so, you know, extensive talk with Wario and the, and the committee, they just kept reassuring me that I'm the type of person right now that needs to lead this program. And I think that was, that was the icing on the cake for me and my family. Hey guys, so I'm Johnny Coker from KRWG Public Media. Um, I have a question for Mario Mocha actually. Um, with the findings from the Rody Law Firm um, coming out recently, what is your plan to make sure that, you know, the policies that they um, suggested for the NMSU basketball program or athletics in general, um, what, how do you feel that you're going to implement that to make sure that athletics programs in the university are followed and um, that the culture within the athletics programs are, you know, make sure that the culture within the athletics department are followed clearly and that, you know, things are, I don't know, just better within the departments. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, give you a, a multiple part answer on that. Number one, that uh, we did read the executive summary and we know that a task force will be put together. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that I'll be part of that as well. But whatever the task force is made up and what comes out of that, we will certainly actively follow. Right. You can always get better at things. You know, when you talk about the culture of the athletic program, um, I'll remind everybody, you know, we're talking about a program, 400 student athletes that for 17 and a half years have averaged over a 3.0 GPA, that have over, yeah, <clears throat> that have over, this is post-COVID, 2,000 hours of community service. Pre-COVID, it was 6,000 per year. And in 2022, the year 2022, there was only two schools in the country that went to the NCAA tournament in men's basketball, baseball, women's golf, women's tennis, women's soccer, and Coach Jerry Kill won a bowl game. That was the University of Arkansas. That was the University of Arkansas and the New Mexico State Aggies. So there is no doubt we will uh, embrace what the uh, task force comes up with. Um, we anxiously await that to be created uh, and to be finalized. Uh, but I also do believe we have 400 student athletes. Many of them are doing a tremendous job in the community, in the classroom, and in competition. And I just don't want people to forget that as well. <laughs> Coach James King with uh, CBS 4K Fox 14. First off, congratulations on the new job. Obviously, New Mexico State's about to enter Conference USA. Um, when you were considering joining uh, the program, <laughs> how exciting was that proposition to, to lead a program into a new conference, albeit with Sam Houston State as well? But 
Um, just what was that like? How did that weigh on you when you were making the decision? Yeah, I mean, part part of it for sure. Uh, you know, again, the, you know, we were in the Southland Conference at one time um, at Sam Houston, and then we made that move to the WAC, and just to see the jump in the different, you know, level of those two leagues, I thought the WAC, the last two years we've been in the WAC was, I mean, the WAC is so underrated. It's such a good basketball league, a really good basketball league, and a lot of really good players and coaches. But then Conference USA, I feel, is another step up, and, I, you know, it's, I told people all the time, I'm like, I've had the same job for 13 years, but I really like had three different jobs. Well, two, because I actually didn't get to coach in Conference USA there, but had two different jobs. And so it was really unique for me. But to, you know, to be able to take this storied program and then not just that, but also lead it to another, another conference. I mean, there's not a lot of people that can say that. And so, you know, I'm, I'm feel privileged you know, to be able to do that. And I know it's going to be a tough league. I know the travel is going to be going to be tough. Um, but, you know, right now with nine teams and, you know, you'll have eight, eight teams that you'll play twice. So it's a balanced league, whereas the WAC was not balanced at all. And that was hard, you know, not being able to like this year. You know, we lost to Utah Valley the first conference game of the year, and yet we never got to play them again. So I think that balanced league in Conference USA will be, you know, be what it's all about. And, you know, we're just excited about joining it. I know Mario will feel the same way I do. I think last year in the spring, they invited us to the conference meetings and I really felt the, the uh, professionalism of Conference USA. Uh, Ms. Ms. McLeod, Judy McLeod, I think she does an unbelievable job in that league. Uh, it's just very professional, very organized. Um, I, think it's, I think we're all going to be very happy about being in that conference. Thank you. Coach Uten. Back here, Connor Moreno for the Roundup here on campus. Uh, Mario talked about the success of all the other athletic teams here on campus. Uh, how are you going to fit in with everyone else here taking over the job? Uh, well, uh, you know, I think one thing, you know, I've know, heard so much about Coach Kill and the job that he's done in such a quick time here, you know, with the football program. Um, and then just everybody else has been successful, always been successful. But, um, you know, I've been a head coach for 13 years, and in my 13 years, we only had one losing season in 13 years. And, you know, we were blessed to win 261 games, which averages out to 20 wins a year for 13 years. I think the level of consistency is probably what I'm more proud of than, than anything, just trying to, you know, it's hard to do um, in this day and age with the portal and, a lot of different things, it's hard to keep that level of consistency. And I think that's why it's so important that you build a culture. The athletic department culture here is tremendous. We've just got to get the basketball, men's basketball program culture back to match it. And, and we'll do that, and it, and, it, and it won't take long to get the culture back. Okay, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Hi, Coach Uden, uh, Adrian Ochoa with ABC7. Congratulations again on the, getting the, the job here at NMSU. Thank you. Uh, you're entering some big rivalries here coming into NMSU. Uh, obviously, right down the road, you got UTEP, Joe Golding there. What? And then, of course, I-25, I you get UNM. Just how excited are you about the rivalries against UTEP and UNM as you enter? Uh, well, I mean, that's, you know, your rivalry is always exciting. You know, I told the story the other night when I got to Sam Houston as an assistant in 2004, I left Tarleton State where it was purple and all I had was a closet full of purple ties. So one of the first games I showed up at Sam Houston with a purple tie on and the radio guy about ripped my <laughs> neck off. It's like, you don't wear purple here. Uh, okay. But I think, you, you know, at that point in time, I had no idea what that robbery was like with Stephen F. Austin. I mean, it is mm -hmm. probably no different than you know, the rivalry here with us in New Mexico and us in UTEP. So that's exciting. I mean, I, I know everyone in here is excited. You know, I um, also know that those two programs are doing real well right now. And uh, Joe's one of my close friends. Uh, he and I are really, really, really good friends. We've competed against each other quite a bit at Abilene. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know a lot about, you know, New Mexico. I've watched them play a lot. They come on at 
on uh, the Fox Sports at 9 o'clock. So normally Chris and I are winding down, and I'm watching film, and I've got the TV on. I've watched them play about four or five times this year, maybe six. And, you know, Coach Patino does a great job there. They, they're they very talented. Um, you know, I mean, it's it, – for everyone in here, it's going to be unbelievably exciting. For me, it's another game, right, because I want to win every game, uh, whether it's <laughs> – New Mexico or <laughs> Tarleton or, you know, I mean, it's going to be hard, but, you know, when we go to Sam Houston next year, we're, we're going to try to win that game. So I think that's just what you do. And, uh, you know, I, again, I'm looking forward to that and learning a lot more about, you know, the rivalry and, and you know, how people feel, on, uh, you know, personally about it as well. Mario, most of the coaching hires that you had to make here, with the exception of Coach Dan, didn't have maybe the head coaching experience that you outlined going into this one. So I'm just wondering, like, what what that was like for you, knowing going in when you're trying to establish a culture that you'd be able to hire someone that has done it before. Yeah, it was really important. You know, we were talking about of the previous 27 coaches, how many you know had you know had uh, were coming from head coaching jobs, not too many. Um, it was important this time, you know, um, uh, coaching searches uh, are kind of like uh, individual games, right? They're like chapters of a book and they, un they, they will uh, reveal themselves. And this time I just felt that it was critically important uh, to have someone who had been a head coach, right? Because we're in a unique situation and there's a, there's a, a tremendous need probably to rebuild a roster, you know, establish a culture, things like that. And when... Um, when you're just looking at assistants, it's a lot easier, right? Because there's a lot of them who want the job. They all want their names to be out there too, or a lot of them do because it helps them. Um, and when you zero in on head coaches, it's just a little more behind the scenes and um, a little more being delicate. But um, I personally um, saw Coach Hooten. I kind of met him when uh, Jans was a head coach. Uh, Sherry put together a big old six-man trip brought about 70 people down to Sam Houston, and we lost worse than we ever have. I don't think that was Jans's worst loss. We were joking about it uh, on the phone. I know Jans was like, bring that up in the press conference. And the coach was like, I'm not doing that. But they beat the hell out of us. And I looked down at one point in time, and Coach Hooten was coaching like Jans. I mean, he was not trying to not beat us by 50 points. Not embarrass us, but he was not going to take the foot off the gas. So I'm staring down there, and at one point in time, he must have felt me looking because he gave me this look right back, and I was like, nah, I'm not doing anything. I'm just looking to see how the guy coaches. And uh, after the ball game, Jans was going crazy in the locker room, so I'm like, I'm not doing that. And uh, Coach was doing a, uh, an interview and uh, up, in the, up in the stands. And I went up there, and I waited, and I said, hey, uh, I'm the athletic director at New Mexico State. And he goes, I know who you are. And I said, I just want to tell you congratulations because nobody beats us like that. And he said, and then he was real nice after that. Uh, but that's when I first, uh, you know, kind of really got to know and they really started to follow him from that point on for really an entire year. Just, and you know, with ESPN Plus, I got to watch a ton of games during the season and just everything I heard. Uh, from coaches all over the place. You mentioned Coach Golding, Coach Jans, et cetera. Character. You know, nobody not said that. You don't, you don't, you're not a finalist for the Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award without people in this industry knowing the kind of person you are, right? And then when you marry that with the kind of results he's got, and I think Coach would say, you know, look, all institutions are different, right? We have less stuff than others, but, you know, this is a place that maybe has a little bit more stuff than his previous place. So I think, you know, that coupled with the person he is, the teams he's been able to put together, um, for me, this was kind of my target all along. And thank goodness for social media that I could find out he was going to take the job. So. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. VC. Uh, my understanding is that, you know, he would start as a result of being able to find an experienced coach. You know, the salary was going to have to be a little bit more. I was wondering if, you could talk about the process and securing and, you know, was there a ceiling or were you like, I mean, how did you just secure, make sure that you could pay for, for a head coach when you guys haven't been able to do that before? Mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, thanks for the question. There was a couple of items that were actually relevant to the discussion about what kind of uh, compensation we could provide. Um, it has uh, not been lost on me that for, for, for years our, our community has been very generous. And we have donors that actually have supplemented uh, coaches' salaries. So you, what you see is a base salary. It's not typically the real actual salary uh, because it's, it's supplemented with, uh, with uh, philanthropy contributions kind of things. So uh, we purpose to change that. We purpose to change that and be competitive. Uh, two things that helped us. One uh, factor was that we're moving into Conference USA. It provides us a better, um, uh, essentially, allocation from the conference itself. It provides us an additional uh, recurring budget that we can then manage for all of our programs, not just not just uh, the the, uh, the elite programs. Um, so that coupled with the idea that. Uh, it was important for us to be competitive, and we looked at what are the salaries for all the various uh, members of Conference USA, and we wanted to kind of stay in that midpoint, and that gave rise to the offer that we provided and uh, was part of the contract. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. And that uh, concludes this afternoon's press conference. We uh, invite you to join us in the suites upstairs. Uh, for the media, yeah, for the media, <laughs> for the media, we'll be uh, passing out the contract. I think Ed Pasaski, our CFO, or Joseph, um, our HR, they're, they're in the back. Ed's waving his hand, and he hates to wave his hand because Ed doesn't like a lot of things. But he's got copies of the contract for you. Uh, typically, Bron Cartwright goes over that. If there's any questions, you can ask me, uh, or we can get those to you on Monday when Bron uh, returns. Uh, reception immediately following upstairs. I know Coach is probably going to have some one-on-one, so just bear with him. But hopefully you all will get a chance to interact with uh, his family. And uh, those of you who would like to stay would uh, love to have you upstairs. Thank you for coming today. All right. Go Aggies. Congratulations, dude. It's all right.